Okay, hello everybody. So um, I'm a PM in the Cosmos DB engineering team, uh, and I lead the program work for the JVM ecosystem, what we call the JVM ecosystem, which maintains uh, some open source projects, including the Java SDK for Cosmos DB, uh, the Spring Data Client Library, the Spark Connector, and the Kafka Connector. And I wanted to invite Raj, who's an engineer from uh, Mars Incorporated, who uh, I worked with and has also been working closely with uh, uh, our Cloud Solution Architect team, uh, Jaladi, and another Raj from Microsoft. Um, and they had an interesting challenge, which uh, involved first selecting uh, one tool and then course correcting to another tool. So I won't steal his thunder anymore. I'll just hand over to Raj and uh, let him uh, talk you through this this scenario. Hi, everyone. I'm Raj Tuteja. I work here as Senior Manager of Data Engineering. And uh, we will go through a few slides, uh, talk about uh, how we can stream data easily from a uh, Cosmos change feed to ADLS. So let me start with the slides here and we will talk about, and we will have a code walkthrough as well. All right, so the first thing here is, um, what is Cosmos change feed? So as you know, Cosmos change feed is a persistent record of changes to a container in the order they occur. It then outputs the sorted list of documents that were changed in order in which they were modified. And in this session, we are going to talk about how to stream that data. All right, so our business requirement, we had we have over 15 databases in Cosmos and over 100 collections. And we wanted the data to be presented to our users for operational reporting near real time. And some of those uh, examples would be when the um, status of a patient changes, we want to notify our our downstream systems right away, the status of the patient has changed. Or when the new appointment slots become available, we want to uh, notify our field operations that, that new appointments are available. So those were some of the uh, requirements that we had so that we can uh, report data near real time. So um, Tio mentioned we looked at a couple of approaches. The first approach that we were working on or we tried we were taking data from Cosmos using Kafka, Kafka Connect, and uh, we had that data in Azure Event Hub. And from Event Hub, we created a Kafka stream through Azure Databricks to stream that data into ADLS. So this was our first approach that we were we tried, and uh, um, because of the size of the data, number of data bases that we had and the requirements for near near real time um, availability of data, it required a lot of ports allocation in Azure Event Hub. And the memory allocation was very, very high because we had multiple environments, dev, test, prod, and all those environments uh, required similar setup so that we can develop, test, and, and uh, before we put it to production. So, so this was our first approach that we tried. And then we tried our next approach. You see this looks much simpler here. And we, we are using here Azure SDK for Java and Azure Cosmos DB Spark 3 OLTP connector is part of the Azure SDK for Java. So we can treat the change feed directly from Cosmos here using this library from Databricks and store that data in ADLS. So it can it renders both the Kafka Connect and Event Hub basically redundant. So you have two less moving parts. You don't need to allocate such a high memory so you save the cost and setup time you and and this one actually works better here for us at, at least for our requirement and the connector is available in azure databricks and each stream can be run on, on its own job cluster and that provides a lot of flexibility and scalability so if you're 
uh, if your streams are like some some streams in our case were like maybe a couple of records a day and other streams are millions of records a day. So you can easily scale up your clusters depending on your uh, streaming needs. And in the next slide, we are going to take a look at the code snippet here. So you can see uh, the library provides a lot of options. So we can go through those options um, here, some of them. The first one here, you see, we just need to provide the Cosmos account endpoint, the account key, how to connect so it can uh, authenticate and authorize you, uh, which database you are pulling data from, the container that you are pulling data from, and if your setup is in a private network, then you need to set the gateway mode. And there are a quite a few other options how you can uh, stream data from which point you want to start and uh, uh, all, those, uh, all those configuration options are very, very well documented. And here you see, you just need to do spark.read stream and, and pass your options, the read options here and you can start streaming data. So once you have your data frame created that is reading data, you can write that data, data frame uh, with the write stream options here. And um, so, so it's, it works very well um, out of the box. So you have these options available and uh, the configuration options that, that we are going to talk about are very well documented. As I said, uh, you can go go through these links here. So the configuration parameters, and there are quite a few samples available here and some of the main documents on Microsoft website uh, that, that can be helpful uh, as you implement these changes. So um, in our scenario, um, we, we faced a couple of uh, challenges initially. So our setup is all in private networks with the VNet setup. Uh, so we had to set up that gateway mode I mentioned earlier uh, to prove so that it passes data or or, or it passes the data through the uh, through the firewalls and uses port 443. Otherwise, it it can use multiple ports from Cosmos. So uh, there could be some performance challenges uh, um, if you don't partition your tables correctly because as you stream data, you are merging data every time to your uh, target tables, so make sure you partition your tables correctly. Uh, another challenge could be if you if your cluster is not sized correctly and the memory allocation is not uh, appropriate, depending on your data size, there could be multiple reads from Cosmos uh, because the data is uh, not persisted in memory yet. So make sure you, you have the uh, data persisted so that it doesn't uh, read multiple times. Um, the checkpoints, uh, that's another important part. So you can store the checkpoint and uh, and uh, the if you want to st stop your stream and, and restart it, it will restart from the checkpoint. Uh, you also have the option of clearing the checkpoint and then you can read from a certain point uh, from your source if you want to uh, reset some of that. Right. Um, so we will um, do a code walkthrough. Um, before that, I want to just um, show one more thing to you. Uh, I mentioned there are a lot of uh, configuration options available. So these configuration options are documented very well here. So you see all these options, um, generic configurations, AD authentication, configuration. So all of these are very well documented. So you, go, you can go through those links and, and figure out which options work for you. Um, and I'll show the actual code now with the running stream. So, this is our actual code. We are running this stream here. I'll go through the stream first. So you see uh, at the bottom here, the change feed is running here. Um, and we are doing uh, uh, 
as of now it's not streaming any data really but but the streams are running so going through the code a little bit here so the way we we run it uh, we have just one notebook and we pass parameters for our different streams to this notebook as we schedule these jobs and th those jobs can take different parameters depending on which stream we are running um, the the first one here you see um, we have the unique keys identified what what mode we want to run so we are passing all those parameters reading reading these parameters here so uh, this is our actual code running in uh, our production environment uh, So we are logging some of those uh, uh, those uh, um, uh, streams as as we um, as we go through it. Um, I I showed the code snippet earlier, and you can see here uh, we are writing the streams um, as after we um, read it from here. So this is the read stream, and this is the write stream. So you can see we are writing the stream after we read the data. So it's it's a very straightforward, very simple, and as I said earlier, um, we we struggled a lot when we started with Kafka because of our data size and and the number of uh, uh, number of uh, databases that we had. We our we had very high board allocations. Uh, the memory consumption was very high, but with this library, uh, it it looks uh, looks very straightforward to us. And uh, we are happy that uh, we connected with you and, and we were able to use this. Okay, thank you very much, Raj. I really appreciate you uh, taking the time to to show your work and to show how you solved this uh, this problem uh, and the steps that you take and, and uh, that you took uh, and uh, how you had to navigate through one thing and then course correct to another thing and, and how that worked out for you. So I really appreciate that. Hope you enjoyed uh, the the uh, presentation and hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. And thanks for watching. Thanks.